Today, I'll be presenting my master thesis titled Multi-Agent Deep Reinforcement Learning for Anatomical Landmark Detection. As the name suggests, it's about finding landmarks in 3D medical scans, while exploring deep reinforcement learning methods such as multiple agents and trying out new architectures. On the right, we can see a cardiac scan with six colored dots, each of them representing a precise location within the heart, and our goal is to have agents that automatically find those landmarks. This is critical for multiple medical applications, such as being able to measure the length, the length between two and anatomical landmarks, uh, also being able to align 3D volumes, or again being able to extract 2D clinical standard planes. A second re reason behind this research is that findings can be relevant in other areas. For example, on the left is a deep reinforcement learning method uh, used to, um, to play a bunch of Atari games and it's managed to have superhuman performances on most of those games. In the middle is a work by OpenAI where they have multiple agents playing hide and seek. And on the right is our task, so that is uh, one agent in blue trying to find a landmark in red uh, in a brain scan, and we can see that the agent is aware of its surroundings uh, represented by the yellow square. All those three methods seem uh, very different or in different uh, areas, but they all use the same method, which is deep reinforcement learning. In this research, we've re-implemented two existing works, one using single agent and the other one using multiple agents for landmark detection. And we've also implemented a novel approach for communicative multi-agent system. Uh, finally, we've evaluated on three different data sets, um, and we found that our new communicative agent outperforms previous methods. Let's go back to what is deep reinforcement learning to really understand uh, what we've done. So deep learning is basically uh, neural networks that have many layers, so that's what they call deep. And reinforcement learning is uh, about an agent navigating within an environment, taking actions, and it learns through reward signals. This is mathematically founded on the Bellman expectation equation that we can see below, and it quantifies the future rewards in that an agent can get by taking an action inside a certain state. Um, so here is our single agent environment. So it's a 3D medical image and the goal is to find the anatomical landmark. So the closer the agent will be and the higher the rewards it will get. The agent can move uh, left, right, up, down, forward or backward within this environment. This is technically known as a partially observable mark of decision process. Here is uh, the deep Q network architecture of single agent. So deep Q network is the neural network that will try to predict the Q values that we mentioned uh, for an agent in a certain state. So in the left, we can see the state is, um, so the what the agent can see, it's like a 45 by 45 by 45 uh, voxel um, cube. And we have four of them because it can, by seeing its history, so, so those four represents its four previous steps. And by seeing the history, the agent can learn a, uh, can have a better sense of movement. And so this uh, deep Q network will have convolutional layers and fully connected layers that will end uh, with six scalars, each of them representing the Q value for the six possible action of the agent. Now that we've presented how a single agent was done in previous works. Uh, let's move on to multiple agents. The environment is very similar, uh, but now we have multiple agents and potentially multiple landmarks. Uh, agents move in the same way and receive rewards uh, similarly. This is now known as a decentralized, partially observable market decision process. Decentralized coming from the fact that we have multiple agents. So the a naive way of, uh, to have multiple agents would be to have um, non-communicative multiple agents. It's like single agents working in parallel. Uh, but using communication uh, can tremendously increase the accuracy. Uh, we can either have implicit communication by sharing weights, such as in the convolutional layers, or again, we can have explicit communication. For example, one way is to handcraft shared information so that the agent could communicate their relative distance uh, to each other. Or we can also have an, a learned uh, communication channel using backpropagation, and we will come to this in a minute. This is a previous work that used implicit communication. It was uh, The DeepQ network was named CollabDQN. So the input is, again, this uh, region of interest uh, around the agent uh, with the four previous ones so that it can have a sense of movement. And now we have as many as there are agents. They all go through the same convolutional architecture. It's called a Siamese convolutional architecture. 
and then each of those agents uh, has a fully connected uh, has a fully connected layer that uh, allows it to learn specificities for its own landmark. And each of those will end with the fixed colors that represent the key values for each action of each agent. Now, what we've done in our research is implement a novel um, DeepQ network that we name C model. This is a slightly so it's it's very similar to the previous one, but now use also explicit communication with those uh, communication channels in with blue arrows and red arrows. So this is uh, based on the ComNet architecture that is re referenced below. And what it does is basically between each agent, uh, their information is now shared using those communication channels. So here, in, in, in this is represented with only two agents, but we could scale it to as many agents as we want. And basically what's interesting is what they share, what what those um, channels uh, carry uh, as message, isn't necessarily um, understandable by a human, but they make sense to those agents and they learned to share the best possible messages to uh, find the landmarks. And so those communication channels are, uh, or the weights of those communication channels are tuned with uh, back propagation. This is an example of five CMOL agents on brain MRI scans. We can see each of them has a different landmark, and in the end, their um, their accuracy will be about one millimeter or two millimeter away from the actual uh, position. Some of them are exactly spot on the right location. We've evaluated those uh, our methods as well as baselines we've implemented uh, using three data sets. One is uh, brain scan MRIs, another one is cardiac MRI and the third one is fetal brain ultrasounds. What we can conclude from this evaluation is that our innovative learned communication implementation, which is CMOL, outperforms all the, all of the methods from in most landmarks. So some landmarks have a better accuracy using previous work, but in most landmarks, CMOL will be the best. We still have a couple of limitations. DeepQ networks uh, are a bl black box, so it's hard to understand uh, why some decisions are taken and trace back any bugs. Also, it can be long to train. It's about four days in our case. And as, as we mentioned, landmarks have different optimal architectures. So given a new landmarks, it's not certain that CMOL will perform the best. In the future, uh, a way to improve our model would be to gather more data, whether manually or through data augmentation. Uh, we could also implement a couple of extensions uh, in deep reinforcement learning. And finally, as we've obtained promising results, we'd like to be able to apply those findings to other medical applications, such as view planning.